we have uh, my friend, Mr. Bill Blankshane, who is the founder and chief story architect of Story Builders. We talk all about how you can write your first book. We talk about how you can publish it. We're going to be diving in. Do you want blissful balance in your personal and professional life? Great. What's up, guys? My name is Kerry Jack, and I want to help you. Happy hustle, a life you love, one full of passion, purpose, and positive impact. I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur, a professional model slash actor, a digital marketing specialist, a podcast host, author, a biohacker, an eco warrior, a martial artist, a hippie cowboy, and a humanitarian. My goal is to educate, inspire, and entertain you to live a life of passion, purpose, and positive impact. It is time to happy hustle your dream reality. All right, my man, Mr. Bill Blankshane, welcome to the Happiest Podcast. I am super excited to rock the mic with you. Well, I'm I'm super excited. I, anytime I'm with you, I know I'm going to be happy and I know I'm going to be hustling. So it's going to be tons of fun. So. <laughs> Let's go. Well, so fun fact, I'm actually a client of Bill's and Story Builders. So we have a longstanding relationship because he has helped me bring my next iteration, him and his amazing team, shout out to Story Builders, okay. um, my next iteration of the Happy Hustle version 2.0 to market, which is so exciting. What a labor of love a book is. And we're going to get into that and so much more. But ultimately, man, you're the founder and chief story architect of Story Builders, which is a creative team of storytellers who share your passion for helping people to live a story worth telling. And you're also a New York Times bestselling writer. You've worked with people like uh, John C. Maxwell, Kevin Harrington, Lewis Howes, Michael Hyatt, and so many others. And you are a father of six, a husband, and you're a happy hustler. So let's just kind of call it what it is, man. You got a lot going on. Um, and I'm curious to get into specifically like how the happy hustlers can share their story mm -hmm. in the form of a book and some of the pitfalls that authors you know, run into along the journey and how we can avoid them sure. and so much more. But before we get into all that good stuff, Bill, what is something interesting about yourself that not too many people know? Wow. Interesting thing about myself. Okay. So this is maybe the first time I've gone public with this now that I think about this. <laughs> nice. All right. So back in the day, my dream was to be a singer. Oh, like that was <laughs> to be on the stage, holding the mic. And that was my dream. So, you know, as an older teenager, I actually took private voice lessons from a member of, I lived near Cleveland, Ohio, a member of the Cleveland Lyric Opera. Hmm. And so, yeah, nobody who knows me would ever think me and opera go together. But <clears throat> yeah, I did. Um, I actually sang for a while and I thought that's going to be my path, man. That's what I'm going to be on. Uh, and I'm so glad that my dream did not <laughs> go, <laughs> go that direction. Um, not that I couldn't have, but I just felt like that wasn't really where my core passion was. It was around storytelling, right? Mm. And so in a different direction. Anyways, but that's that's a very little known fact about me. So. You know, that is interesting. And you are using a mic now. So you're, you're, somewhat, true. you're somewhat living <laughs> yeah, out your I, dream. I can grab onto it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, though. I mean, no one wants to hear me sing. That's for sure. Right. But <laughs> maybe they want to hear me storytell. And I know I want to hear you storytell because yeah. let's face it, like everyone has a story that I believe yeah. can add value to, so to somebody out there. Like it really is. It's just, I think every single person has a book in them and they should write it. But what happens is, you know, they kick the can down the road and, and maybe if that's you right now listening, you're a happy hustler out there and you've been kicking the can down the road. This is going to be a transformative mm -hmm. next 45 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I'll tell you, there's, there's little people in the world who are doing it better than Bill and Story Builders to be able to just share your story in a systematic way that actually not only does it service, but also like sells books and like and spreads the message and builds your business in the process. Right. Let's just kind of dive right in. What is like the number one mistake that you see authors make when it comes time to share their story? Well, I think number one, you kind of referenced there is most people undervalue their own story, 
Mm. Right? They, they think they have some area of knowledge and expertise they've built over time, but they, but they tend to think, well, a lot of people have written about that. Let, let's just call it leadership, for example. There, there's no lack of leadership books out. There's tons of leadership books. I mean, work with John Maxwell and many others. Yeah. All kinds of leadership books. But what makes it unique is no one else has your experiences. No one else has your story. No one else has your personality, your perspective, your take on things. Mm -hmm. And the reality is uh, no one is the right fit for everyone. Right. So, so your, your story is going to resonate with some people. It's not going to resonate with others. The, the, the most famous writers out there on leadership, their story is going to resonate with some, not with others. Uh, you know, all, all that kind of, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people and I've told and these are the people I've worked with and they've said, yeah, I like that person, like that, that person don't really care for that, what they write, you know, that kind of, that's just the way it is. So first I think undervaluing your own story. Hmm. And then second, I think just not being intentional about what it is that you want to share with the world. Hmm. Right. Uh, I've seen so many authors are jumping in and say, I'm going to write a book and they or do a lot of activity and then end up with a book that doesn't feel like it's crystal clear. It really, you know, resonates. So I think if, if you do nothing else, getting help, strategic help on the front end of what's the plan, right? You, you and I both know uh, our mutual friend, Rory Vaden over at Brand yeah. Builders, right? They do yep. a great job of helping get clarity on personal brands. Mm -hmm. and, and we really come in and help people get clarity on their book strategy. And what is that message? What's your IP, your intellectual property, right? Yeah. Uh, and then how do you monetize that? Where do you go from that? So mm. I, think, I think those are two of the big ones that people stumble around when they get started. Yeah, I would so agree. I mean, and just echoing the point, having IP, like intellectual property, right? Yeah. Being um, unique in your methodology and knowing that that you have a story worth telling, like don't let that imposter syndrome hold you back. Mm, this is yeah, something, yeah. you know, I've fallen victim to, maybe you have too, Bill, but like it's just, you got to realize that someone out there needs your message and, you know, <laughs> you're uniquely positioned to give it to them. And yeah, you yeah. have to kind of get over that fear and, and really start to share. Yeah. I think what would be so valuable for people is to get into some of those early stages of like putting your, your book strategy together. I mean, for you, and, and me and the work that we did with your team, like, I'll just tell you, my, my book was kind of all over the place. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is, it's got a lot of different topics. It's, it's, you know, self-help by nature, but it also, it, you know, there's business, there's spirituality. So it was helpful to have your team help come in and like organize everything and the thoughts and then the through line. I felt like it was almost more difficult because I already had an existing manuscript mm, sure. and I wish I would have just worked with you guys from the get go and just built it from a solid strategy. What do you say as like the first step? Someone's like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to write a book. Like, well, how do we organize those, yep. those thoughts? What's the first step? Absolutely. So when we begin a book project, we, we start with what we call the story strategy phase. When we're starting from scratch. The first thing is really getting clear. We, we do a lot of listening on the front end because we want to, we're not trying to put people in a box. We want to, we ask a lot of probing questions to really unpack the ideas that they have or their story focus, what that looks like. And then we, we work hard to really nail that down, right? If, 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 a, if your reader only remembers one thing from your book, what do you want that one thing to be? What do you want mm. them to, to stick with them? And that, that becomes the guiding message of the book. Mm. And then from there, we build out what are the other components that get there? And we talk about the reader journey. How are we taking them through that? And we use our storytelling structure method, which is our proprietary method of building out that story arc. We call it proprietary, but it, it, it's based on proven storytelling practices for millennia, right? It, it, yeah. It's not a new technique. It's, it's what works but we package it in a way that really makes sense that guides the whole framework of the book. Then we do, drill down into individual chapters using that same structure. How do we structure each chapter that we want to do it, right? So we can get a framework of the book, really put that in play. Um, and, then, and then we give thought to the audience of the book and, and the tone of the book and, and the voice of the book. Cause uh, we work with authors, some of whom they want to do the writing themselves and we coach them through that process. We work with a lot of authors who say, Hey, I'm not a writer. 
I don't want to become a writer. I've got businesses I'm running. I've got brands I'm doing. I don't have time for that. Not a problem. We take care of that as well, right? You're really capturing mm. their voice and their message uh, and then and to bring it to life in whatever the best publishing path uh, is for them. Yeah, and I definitely want to get into publishing, but you said something that I think um, is worth repeating, and that mm. is getting a clear takeaway for your book from the beginning. You know, having that like one sentence powerful statement that you want people to leave with mm -hmm. knowing that almost like starting with the end in mind. Right. And sure. then going from there, building it out chapter by chapter, how does everything thus support this powerful statement? Right. Right. That is huge. And I right. think something that, that, that gets missed. Right. 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 Well, and I think, I think there's a bigger life lesson there where, you know, the same way that we write a book, probably the same way we should live our lives. And that's why, why I talk about <laughs> living a story worth telling is that you got to get clear on your one thing, clear on your mm -hmm. main purpose, clear on your objective, and everything else needs to support that, or it needs to get edited. It needs to get cut out, <laughs> right? It needs to get, it may be a good thing, but it doesn't fit the message, doesn't fit the story of your life. So when it comes to the book, if it doesn't fit the story, it may be a good thing, maybe another book that you need to write. It may be a sub other component. And that's why it helps to really have a great team who's willing to say that to you. It's like, Hey, Carrie, and we've had some of these conversations about your book, right? Like, uh, I'm not really sure that fits in there or so forth. And we, you know, yeah. it, it, and we go back and forth with it. And, and, and sometimes we realize, you know what, Carrie was right. It does need to be in there. And sometimes you realize, you know what, you're right. It doesn't need to be right. It's yeah, a, yeah. it's a collaboration that comes and the creativeness that comes out of that. But, yeah. um, yeah. So I, I, I just think, I think when we approach the book in that way, everything forms around it always with the reader in mind. What's that experience going to be for them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, really trimming the fat, I think is something that I took away from you guys too. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. why do I need to say this in 30 words when it can be said in 10? Right. You know, and I feel like the more you can value the reader's time, the better and you do the heavy lifting as an author and as an editing team and as a, you know, spe specifically story builders, you know, you help sure. trim the fat. And, and that's where a great book becomes sculpted when you are doing that heavy lifting. You know, what is your take on, um, you know, less is more versus, you know, maybe someone who mm. thinks they need to just put everything in the kitchen sink in their book? Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm a big fan of writing with clarity, that that, that kind of trumps everything. It, but it's two things. It's clarity and style that come together. And and it, it clarity is ideal within your style. Like, Carrie, you have a way of communicating and talking. And so in a book, it needs to come across in that way to for you to come across in that way. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, for you to take a very... Uh, um, um, like a terse, let's just uh, use the minimal words as possible, punch it, it just done. And it, it probably wouldn't be the fit for you. You need to add a flavor to it. You need to add a flair. It's just who you are, right? Uh, you're the happy hustler, right? So it needs to have that. Somebody else might have more of an academic tone. I think of uh, somebody like a, a Jordan Peterson or somebody mm -hmm. out there who mm -hmm. generally talks at a higher intellect. That's their space that they own, yeah. right? They want to be, they, he, he needs to be clear, but he can afford to expand that a little bit because, again, it fits his brand. It, so it really is about that. We work with female authors, male authors. We work with business people. We work with coaches, comedians, everybody, right? It needs to fit your style. And so within that style, then clarity becomes key. So you don't want to sacrifice the style and the voice, but hmm. then getting really clear uh, on that. And, and a lot of that just comes from wordsmithing in yeah. many ways. And, and the reality is real writing doesn't begin until you have a first draft. Like and, until you've actually written something, you haven't really started to writing. Writing takes place in the editing process mm. and that that's where the magic can happen. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I can think of multiple conversations with you and Jen specifically right, right, right. <laughs> where you're like, uh, you know, do we need to say 
you know, ass, or can we say <laughs> something a little bit more, and, you know, and, and, and sometimes the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. sometimes it's, yeah, eh, we, we don't have to, we, yeah, we don't want to like, clutter the experience for the reader unnecessarily. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, um, you know, I could think it's like, you know, busting that ass, it could be busting that hump. Right. Carrie, it's like, yeah, but I really wouldn't say hump, you know, you know, so it's like, yeah, that's you true. gotta, yeah. you gotta keep this, the, the tonality, the style, yeah. the flavor, you know, what's uniquely you, but ultimately it needs to be a great read for the, for the right, right, individual right. who's picking it up and holding yeah. it. And that's where the wordsmithing comes yeah. in. Well, it needs to be unique to you and appropriate to your audience. Yeah. Right. Because we've talked about that as you, you've begun doing a lot more in the corporate space and working with organizations and mm -hmm. those kind of things. And you're expanding and growing. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of your audience is expanding and growing. Right. So yeah. having having that readership in mind, um, it isn't just about this is an important life lesson, too, I guess. Right. It isn't about yeah. each one of us just being weird, right? just being who <laughs> we want to be and that yeah. the rest of the world. It's how do we how do we bring our unique self in a way that actually delivers value to the audience we're trying to reach, right? So yeah. it, it's a both and. Exactly. Yeah. You got to think about who the book is for, right? And when people say, oh, it's for everyone, mm -hmm. that's not a yeah. good answer. Yeah. yeah. What What's your process at Story Builders to help identify that perfect target avatar reader? Mm. Well, first we had to figure out the message, right? So uh, we kind of call it the, some people call it the X factor, right? And we're really good at pulling that out, figuring out what that message is. Um, and then, you know, just thinking through that process with an author of one of the first questions I ask every potential author very early in the process, what are you trying to accomplish with this book? What, what are you trying to do? What, what, what's your, what's the end that you have in mind? Is it, is there a business aim? Are you trying to build a brand? Are you on a mission? We work with nonprofits, right? Who have a lot, but they they have a certain mission that they're trying to accomplish with the book. Uh, entrepreneurs as, as a lead in speakers who are trying to get more speaking, get, all those kind of things. Um, and so what is that that you want? Well, based on what you want, who do you need to reach? in order to accomplish that yeah. right so then it, then it's a matter of all right if we know who that is and we know what your book message is the question is is there alignment hmm. um and i i think this is a place we often miss in this space this idea of alignment is that there needs to be alignment not just between the author and the audience that needs to be there but also between the author and and the people they work with to help bring their book to life Right. Uh, alignment in terms of values, alignment, alignment mm -hmm. in terms of just chemistry, you know, and, 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 and those kind of things, um, because you need people who get it yeah, and, and who actually are, are passionate about it. We, we hear all the time from authors who are working with places who they feel like that they're just, they're just word widgets factories. They just crank out word widgets, right? They don't really care about their story. And as you well know, that's just not how we function. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we were like, man, we're in, we want to know how's the baby, how's the family, yeah, yeah. how's everybody yeah. doing, you know, uh, because at the end of the day, you know, uh, I love the title of this book I read It's called uh, when the game is over, it all goes back in the box. Right. And mm. so at the end of the day, at the end of our lives, we want to be able to look back and say, Hey, I made an impact. I made a difference. I connected with people, not, I, I cranked out even more words, right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that nobody read, right? So alignment becomes key that you find the right partners to work with who mm. can help you then align with your audience and yeah. make sure that you're connecting with the people you actually want to connect with. Exactly. Yeah, that's huge. Alignment with your team, your message, the publishing uh, strategy. I want to talk publishing because, you know, writing a book is great, but like if no one reads it, sure it's uh it's kind of all for naught right and i mean rory says you know writers write publishers publish distributors distribute editors edit but no one no sells one the right. book right, right? <laughs> and like as an author you have to sell your book and you have to think about that when you're making these decisions in publishing sure. Sure. i mean my first book was self published right this one's hybrid published with you guys more sure. so and then my next one would be traditional I, I assume you know based on where we're going but who knows like right. the the they each have pros and cons but um talk to us about those pros and cons if you could at each uh different tier of the publishing yeah well it, it's on the one hand it's never been easier to publish 
thanks to technology. Uh, on the other hand, it's it's almost never been more complicated <laughs> to figure out how to how to how best to publish. Yeah, because you know it used to be you had like one option: traditional publishing. That all right? Well, that's easy. You just got to figure yeah. out how to get in that door, right? Yeah. But now there's oh, there's like a dozen doors I could try, and I'm not sure which one. And and I was just talking to somebody about this earlier. Um, there really isn't a clear black and white answer. Like there isn't a distinct, yeah. oh, if this is you, then this. So yeah. um, the whole spectrum, right? Traditional publishing, still a viable option for those that have that. That's usually for people who have a large platform or who have a, a large email list, social media. They have some means of moving books that a traditional publisher can then get behind and put some fuel on that fire and, and try to expand that and grow that. Um, you know, there's pros and cons with that. Um, you know, one of the pros is that if you are that person, you can often get an advance, sometimes a hefty advance, sometimes a small advance uh, on the royalties to help cover that. But it still falls to you as the author to drive that publicity. I've talked to many authors in that space who've gotten uh, really lucrative deals who were just shocked at how little the publisher did to help them promote the book. And mm -hmm. you would think, hey, you dropped six multiple six figures in some cases even seven figures and your publisher didn't really do that much to help promote it right um and so there is that and it might be a fit for some people on the other end of that extreme is like pure self-publishing like just hey i'm going to go in on amazon or whatever some of these little things and just figure it out myself and do it all you can go that route if you want to become an expert in that space um you get all the royalties you get all the control right so but in the middle there there's even a number of hybrid options now, right? So there, there's a number of higher end hybrid options. I, I, there's a number of middle middle end hybrid options, which is kind of where we are at Story Builders and Story Builders Press. There's, there, there's a whole range. And I think the important thing is to know that there isn't a one size fits all. Uh, it, it really kind of depends, right? So if you're looking to make a big run it, like some of the major book lists and so forth, traditional publishers, or more the uh, hybrid space that has access to some of those distribution channels, they might be the best fit for you. If you're not looking to make the big list, but you want to make a splash and so forth, a lot of the hybrid publishing space in the middle, like where we are, that that's going to hit 85, 90, 95% of where books are sold, which are, which are online. Right? Yeah. That's where, that's where books get sold today is primarily online. True. Um, they won't get as much exposure in the bookstores, but again, not very many people are buying in the bookstores. So it, it kind of depends. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of depends like, like in your situation, you know, you, you're, uh, an entrepreneur who has a knack for really getting stuff done and, 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 and pulling a team together to do things. Some of those options might be a better fit for you because it gives you more control and you have really good, you can get exactly what you want where it's a traditional publisher. They, they would have a lot more say on the content of the book, you know, so yeah. it, it, it depends. Uh, and this is, again, going back to alignment, this is why it's important to work with people who can really, you can trust to help guide you through that and who don't have an agenda. I can't tell you how many times I've talked with people and said, I, I don't think we're the best fit for you based on what I'm hearing. You know, I would yeah. suggest you go that direction. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a better fit. So. Yeah. And I, I so appreciate that about you, man. It's, you know, your integrity and, and the way you just keep it real is, is definitely an admirable quality and, and one that drew me to you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'll just speak to everyone out there right now, the happy hustlers listening, like what Bill said about picking the goal for the book and having alignment with that is what should determine your publishing path. Mm. That alone, if you say, hey, I want to be a New York Times bestselling author, this is the book that I'm going to do it with. Because like you can want that goal. I want that goal, sure. sure. But it's I know it's not this book, right? So my publishing path is different based on my goal. Okay. And one of the things that really, um, you you touched on it, but it, it, was, so, it was so off putting to me was when you go traditional, you give up your IP rights to your mm. book m most of the time. Most of the time sure. um, you know, like I have plans to do courses, software as a service, leveraging, sure. you know, my IP for my community. And um, if I went traditional, they would own that IP. Right. And I couldn't do a lot of the things I plan on doing. Not to mention, 
you know, I, I am definitely someone who rather have more control than less. Sure, and, sure, uh, sure. you know, a hybrid publishing deal was really attractive in that sense. Right. And I'd rather like, you know, kind of, uh, eat what I kill in a sense, like go sure. out there, you know, when you, when you get a, a traditional publishing, you know, um, advance, right. You have to look at it like this company is a angel investor in your mm. startup, mm. right? And they're taking equity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and sure. shares of your business. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Apologies for interrupting your programming. But I have to tell you, the best investment you can make in yourself is one in which helps you acquire skills. You've probably heard people talk about, oh, just invest in yourself and you'll be successful. Yes, that's true to a degree, but you have to invest in skills that will ultimately help you achieve your desired results. And I think one of the best skills one can possess, be it an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur, is the sales sword. Really knowing how to sell, utilizing pressure-free persuasion, which will make you more money and more impact. Now, if you want to know how to sell more efficiently and effectively, I just launched a sales course called The Proven Roadmap Process to Selling Millions of Dollars and Helping You to Increase Your Conversions Guaranteed. And you can get access to this new sales course that The Happy Hustle is launching at thehappyhustle.com forward slash sales. And if you act fast, you'll get it at the lowest price it'll ever be available because we are launching it and we want to gain amazing testimonials and social proof to further share this knowledge. So if you act fast, you can get it at the lowest price it'll ever be. That's at thehappyhustle.com forward slash sales. Now let's get back to this episode. Essentially by putting money in as an advance. Right. Would you agree with that analogy? I guess let me pause here. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and you got to realize the percent of royalties that you get with a traditional publisher, typically, if you're a good author, it could be as little as 15%, 10 or 15, yeah. 10, 12, yeah. 15. It could escalate as you go through the contract. But I think most people don't realize that either, that sure, they take yeah. all the headaches off and maybe give you money up front. But I mean, you, that it's an advance. Right. And, and, and in some cases it comes with strings attached to it. And that's kind of what you're getting at with yeah. your IP. If you're planning on building some things out, if you don't bake that in initially, it is going to be an issue. Uh, for example, audiobook rights. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, traditional, I, I work with a lot of traditional publishers. Traditional publishers are, will not negotiate on that. They want the audiobook rights because that's where a lot of the popular things uh, are right now. That's where a lot of the growth is happening in, in publishing, right? Yeah. So if you want to stay can keep control over that, that's going to be a non-starter, right? For most of those conversations. Yeah, exactly. And movie rights for me, that was important, you know, cause I, uh, being in the entertainment world, uh, you sure. know, we talked about you and your modeling career early on before <laughs> we, uh, before we pressed record, I was like, Bill, we need to get you modeling, bro. Like he's got the, the, the dad vibe killing you're, it. You're going to have me in an opera and modeling. <laughs> 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 Who knows what else? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but the truth is like, you know, you have to think about these rights, like your audiobook mm -hmm. rights, your movie rights, you know, your, your right. core Right. rights your speaking rights sometimes they like all this stuff and if you don't know how to read a contract totally. you're screwed totally. you, you're yeah. screwed yeah you, um, you, you have to have an agent if you're working with a traditional publisher in my opinion yeah. well worth it yeah yeah how, how can people go about getting an agent what do you recommend uh, how do they go about getting an agent yeah yeah um it's kind of tricky um it's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, paying your taxes to the IRS, like the IRS knows how, how much you owe, but you have to kind of guess and hope you get it right. <laughs> if you don't, you'll hear <laughs> yeah, about it. Uh, exactly. It's kind of like that. It's like, all right, I need to get a publisher, but I need to have an agent to find a publisher. How do I find an agent to find? Um, it, it's really about as people come to me and, and if they have worthy projects, I'll make introductions to them, right? Hey, here's an agent. I think could be a good fit for you. That's word of mouth is probably the best way to do that, because uh, what agents do, they really serve as the screening mechanism for traditional publishers that, you know, they get all kinds of bids all the time. They're assuming that an agent has done their job and this is a project worthy of their consideration. Um, and, you know, but that, I think that's really the way to go about it is 
is a find books. If, if you don't have any connections, find books that are similar to yours and what you're trying to accomplish. See if you can dig around and find who represents them as an agent uh, and see if you can find a path or an intro to them. That's probably some of the best ways, ways to go around it. Um, in some cases, people, they already have some relationships with traditional publishers and they feel like, all right, I might be able to sidestep that. Again, the challenge there is, well, you're working with one traditional publisher, you're not getting the benefit of them competing for your book, right? And putting mm. it out there and seeing what else is possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, referrals, word of mouth, you know, you can, um, you know, just do cold outreach to literary agents. Um, it's it's a, it's a very important partnership if you are going to go the traditional route. Sure. Uh, my recommendation, and maybe you sure. can add yours, would be don't start traditional unless you have that platform like you mentioned. I would personally recommend starting uh, with a self-published or a hybrid published book. What, what would you say to, to that? Yeah, I, I would completely agree with you. If you're just starting out, I would use the book as your entry point into the marketplace. It, it gives mm. people a re it gives people something to talk about. Then you can do yeah. media, you can do interviews, you can do all that. Now you have a message. Yeah. I, I kind of use the tree analogy when we talk about your intellectual property ecosystem. So, you know, the, the roots of the tree are like your brand defining features. You got to get clarity on who you are and what your brand is. But then the trunk of the tree is kind of the book or books that really form the core. And then out of that book, as you, as you go up the tree, come your branches and your leaves. Those are your learning experiences, your keynote speeches, your digital courses, those kind of things. Uh, and, and, and going through the book process itself is a helpful process, again, to clarify what your message is that you're bringing to the world. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's where we really help add value to that. We work with a gentleman who we're now approaching his third book. And what he has said, he, we've created books, we've created digital courses, we've created workshops, all these things. What he said was, hey, what I love is every time I work with you guys, I come in with my ideas and the, what comes out on the other end is so much better <laughs> than what yeah. I brought in. <laughs> you guys make me look wiser and smarter <laughs> and all that. I'm like, well, that's what we love to do. That's, that's why we're here. So, yeah. um, you know, so, so I think thinking about it that way uh, can be pretty helpful. Yeah. For sure. I mean, the collaboration, I, I've seen it firsthand, like you take an idea and you guys definitely improve upon it. I mean, you've worked with some of the biggest authors in the game. I mean, you know, talk to us about kind of that process with some of these, you know, very high profile people. I mean, you've worked with billionaires, you've worked with people who have millions and millions of followers. And, and I mean, I know each kind of interaction each relationship is different but what have you learned from working with these clientele yeah uh a lot um <laughs> frankly um i think two two things really stand out there there are many but two things one i think and this is helpful for people when they're thinking about making connections with people of influence and so forth one is to i learned early on that you can either be a fan or a friend <laughs> And a lot of people are fans. They, they, they want some, can, can you give me your autograph? Can we take a picture? Can I have this instant of, man, I really feel connected to this person. And then they're gone and they don't remember you. And, but you tell all your friends, Hey, once I got my picture taken with so-and-so, right. Um, and I, what, what I've realized is that people who are in those positions, they, they have to have a lot of walls up. They have to have a lot of boundaries up because they get asked stuff all the time. They get intrusions. And so if someone approaches as a fan, that's, they treat them in one way. Like, all right, I need to keep you at an arm's length because I don't know, you could be a psychotic stalker for, all I know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. um, I'll keep you at an arm's length. But if you approach as a friend and realize these are people just like you and I, there's, there's as a, from a people perspective, I mean, I, I happen to, it's, it's kind of funny. I just, uh, we're in the process of moving, but our new neighbor is a uh, NASCAR champion driver who's just moving in to the area, right? And it's like, oh yeah, he lives over there, right? But it's that idea that if you approach people as they're they're like my neighbor, right? they're just people, uh, it changes your perspective. And if you generally come in with, hey, I'm I'm here to help. How can I be of service to you? Uh, and if I can't, that's fine. But I I want to be of service. So that having that perspective is super helpful because. That leads into the second uh, thing that I've really learned is that 
um, all the same challenges that everyone struggles with, whether you're just starting out, whether you are in a journey, those people struggle with the same challenges. <laughs> so true. Um, you know, I, I remember one, at one point I had a, a lunch in New York city with someone. If I, if I were to say this person's name, everyone would immediately recognize the name. They would know who it say is. It. It, it, it's not, it's not the former president, by the way, just because it's crystal clear. <laughs> Um, All right, now you got a name job. Come on, no, uh, no, I can't, I can't. Come um, on, and well, you'll understand why I can't. All right, all right. Fine. Um, <sighs> but I had lunch with her, and we were talking about maybe doing a project, and we just hit it off. It was a very authentic conversation, and she began to open up about and saying that you know some of the times, a lot of times, I, I bring a lot of value into the rooms I'm in, and I bring a lot of wisdom and insight. She's super successful, very wealthy, very successful. And yeah, she said, sometimes I feel like I'm only in there because of my last name mm. and it's not really me. It's literally, she's like, it's, it's imposter syndrome. I, I have this thing that I struggle with and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking if, if the person just starting out thinking, Oh, if one day I could be like her, right. If yeah, I could yeah, just yeah. be there knew that, Oh, she's struggling with the same thing I'm struggling with. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, the mindset game doesn't change, right? It's all your mindset. It's all the attitude that you bring, the confidence that you bring, the happy hustle that you bring. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's really what it's about. And, and I walked away from that day thinking, wow, uh, you know, the, it, it's the people who are in those positions aren't there because they're radically different from everybody else. It's they've made choices to take advantage of opportunities and position themselves to succeed in that way. But at the end of the day, uh, man, I mean, people are people. Yeah. That's great advice, man. I mean, be a fan or a friend. I, I, um, I say you could, well, technically my, my buddy said this to me and I don't want to not give him credit. He sure. said, uh, treat your friends like celebrities and celebrities like your friends. Mm. And I'll tell you straight up, Bill, this past weekend, whenever you're listening to this, it was um, yeah. UFC 299. And we got to go like ringside uh -huh. to this fight with, I'm sitting literally next to Grant Cardone, Elena Cardone, yeah. Mr. Beast uh, gave yeah. me a feast of bowl. Uh. Logan Paul, <laughs> Damon John is behind me, three uh. seats. Yeah. Liver King, Gary Brecka. Awesome. I mean, the list, uh, the all these pro football players that, right. you know, are right. monsters. Just like the who's who's a yeah. celebrity. Yeah. Donald Trump's there, you know, yeah. Yeah. Patrick Bed. Like, it was like who's who because it's a fight and it was a big fight in Miami. Yeah. And I, I recently recorded an episode um, and I said, connections are greater than currency because mm -hmm. connections – got me that seat not currency there was a lot more people wealthier than me sitting in behind me tony hawk was way behind me you know like like sure, with the people sure, who steve-o was sure. next to me you know it's sure. like but it's connections and so when you yeah, connect yeah. with people of this higher nature if you're so fortunate think right. about that how you can really serve them like bill said yeah. and don't ask them necessarily mm. just provide value in a unique way because these people don't want to do the the creative work for you to become valuable you have to become valuable in your own unique way and i just think that's mm. you know a, an important piece to the puzzle um man this has been so awesome just kind of unpacking this process i do want to kind of go into um you know story builders talk to us about your team and and what's the process to work with you guys and maybe if some people do want to take that step and at least Absolutely. explore it where, where they can go to to check it out Absolutely. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I like to say at story builders, we tell stories that make the world a better place. Mm, and we do that, that by creating compelling books or engaging learning experiences. That's really where our focus is. So all things book related, uh, I would say the easiest thing for someone to do, if they're thinking, Hey, maybe I want to write a book. I've been told I should write a book. I've been thinking about writing a book or I'm in the messy process of writing right, right now. And I need help. <laughs> yeah. I can't figure out the publishing path. I don't know what, what to do. Uh, or I'm trying to figure out how to monetize that, whatever that might be. What I would suggest is uh, take advantage of a free story strategy call with one of our story strategists. Let's dive into it. Let's hear. Let's do some validation of that. Let's let's give you candid feedback on your book idea. Um, well, if if it doesn't have merit, we'll tell you that. 
right? Uh, yeah. But we'll tell you, we'll point you in the right direction. If it's not us, we'll point you elsewhere. Uh, the way to do that is to visit mystorybuilders.com, mystorybuilders.com forward slash story, mystorybuilders.com forward slash story, and just book a time right now. Uh, just grab a time. Uh, I mean, people you're going to talk to, one of our senior story strategists, most likely uh, leads that effort. Um, I mean, we're, he's worked with thousands of authors, thousands of books. We'll, we'll get you squared away. You'll find out your options. You'll get all your questions answered frankly, yeah. as you can make your best decisions about how to bring your story to life. Yeah. Yeah. And I would highly recommend like taking Bill and Story Builders up on this offer because having someone who's a, an expert in the industry, just, you know, be able to digest your ideas, your story, your, um, your through line and your publishing path and, and tell you, you know, honest feedback about it is invaluable, especially like, as an author, you have to realize it's going to become your baby. It's a labor of love and you don't want to like make one key decision that is potentially incorrect, you know? So you got to take, you know, uh, proper yeah. action and learn from experts and, and yeah, we'll link that up in the show notes. My story builders.com forward slash story, right? Yep. Yep. And we've seen all the mistakes. So if you've made mistakes, don't be like, oh, they'll think I'm stupid because I've made it. No, we, we've seen them all. We've, we, right? we, we, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, right. Bring it on. Um, you know, you're not going to, we're not going to, we, we've seen it all before. Yeah. No, that's, that's definitely true. And um, I can just speak uh, open testimonial. Bill's not paying me to say this. It has been a phenomenal experience. And mm. I, I'm much more proud of my book. And the message I'm putting out, the story and how it could potentially impact lives because of story mm. builders. So mm. thank you, man. Um, yeah. This has been awesome. I do want to kind of put you through some of our traditional questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is more about the man, Bill. Yeah. Uh, specifically, we call them happy hustle hacks. So this would be something for health. You know, in order to run a business and run a family, mm. six kids, and uh, you know. Um, stay in, you know, good shape and like have energy, you have to have your health optimized. What would you say is something uniquely bill, maybe a tip or tool, a tactic, um, that we could deem a happy hustle hack in the health arena? <sighs> Boy, in the health arena. Wow. Um, I think, I think one of the, you know, I, I, full disclosure, I, 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 there was a season there where I was pushing so hard in the business where I, I didn't really pay a lot of attention to it. Mm. I, I'd always been in decent shape my whole life and just kind of let it go. And it was only in the last couple of years that I've realized, you know, you can't do that because your energy level suffers. You can't, if you can't, then you can't really be fully present for everybody in your life. And one of our sure. core values as a company is energy, right? Being fully present wherever we are and whatever we're doing. Um, you know, so I think ironically it begins like every single day, every day without exception, my day starts with focused, quiet meditation time. You know, it's me and a cup of coffee. Uh, often I'll be reading the Bible or other books or stuff like that. And just thinking through the day, how that's going to mm. run. But then I've got my, you know, whatever that looks like, if it's, if I'm taking a walk, if I got a workout, whatever the case may be, that's just lined up and ready to go. So I don't have to think about it. Uh, and by the way, I've enlisted coaches to help with that. Yeah. Right? I mean, just like we've been talking about storytelling, needing coaches to help pull that off is the importance of having a good coach who can guide you give you that advanced level, that customization, if you will, of what really works yeah. for you. I've, I found that to be super helpful. Um, and all of it, the reason I started with that morning was it's, it's really about creating and protecting the margin in life to get the important things done. Yeah. And, and that's, if, if I, if I could point, if you could do one thing that would move the needle most, I think that would be it of having the margin to be intentional it, rather than it, that puts the happy in the hustle. <laughs> Otherwise you're just hustling. Right? <laughs> Dude, amen. Amen. Yeah. That's a great tool. Uh, you know, the morning meditation, the time to just be very intentional and, um, yeah, you'll burn out. Take it from Bill and I, if you don't prioritize yeah. your health uh, yeah. and you don't prioritize the things that bring you joy too. So yeah. you yeah. got a happy hustle. Yeah. Um, 
let's talk about money. I think money is an important piece to the puzzle, especially as an author. You're going to need money to fund the marketing. Sure. Um, sure. What would you say is a happy hustle hack in this arena? Maybe something uniquely bill, something you do to save or invest or spend wisely that we could deem a happy hustle hack in the money game. Well, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is, um, ironically, it's giving it away. Um, having, holding money very loosely. Um, I think we have to be careful because depending on your own money story, you may have, you know, money wounds from your previous past that actually cause you to throw money away. Like mm. I'm afraid of it. I don't want it. Just get rid of yeah. it. Um, and that's not healthy. Uh, but when you have a great relationship with money, you realize, Hey, I, I, I have the opportunity to give that away. So like every, everything, everyone who works with us at story builders, we give a percentage of that away. We help, uh, various human trafficking, anti-human trafficking causes. We help adoption services. Like we have a number of these things that we just give it away. Um, and so that right from the top, we've done intentionally to remind our whole team, first of all, why we exist. We're here to help other people live a story worth telling. So freeing people from trafficking, helping them mm. find their forever family, those kind of things we really pour in. So I think, again, it's that mindset that we approach first of all, and then perhaps the most important from an entrepreneurial perspective, perspective is uh, paying yourself first, right? Mm. You may have yeah. heard of you know, Mike Michalowicz's book, Profit First kind of captures yeah. that concept, but it really is- coming on the podcast actually, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Mike. I mean, it, so it really is a, a make sure that you are getting paid and not that you're hoping that somehow your entrepreneurial efforts will end up making you something at the end of the day, <laughs> um, you know, and, and that's a common trap that people fall into. So I think, I think that those two things, giving it and then prioritizing as an entrepreneur, making sure you're getting paid. Yeah. Yeah. Great points there. I mean, like Tony Robbins says, the secret to living is giving, right? And, you know, whenever you can honestly give money, we, our acronym is GIFT, Give Insight, Finances, and Time. And sure. you'll, sure. Be, you'll be so much more fulfilled if you just make giving a part of it. You know, sure. we have our 1% for the planet. We give, um, sure. you know, as a part of the Happy Hustle yeah. uh, company, yeah, yeah, yeah. just giving to eco causes. And it's just, it's just, it's an ethos that if you embody it, you'll be happier. And yeah, definitely profit first, you know, make sure you're taking care of yourself. Sure. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. Let's talk about spirituality. I know faith is a big piece, um, you know, to your puzzle. And uh, it's definitely something for me. Like I am a student of all religions. I, I mean, I haven't dove deep into all of them, but I, I feel like I know enough of many to like pull the the big beliefs and to kind of assimilate my own sure. uh, higher power. Uh, I do believe in God, you know, very deeply. I pray every day, but I think it's important for any happy hustler to have like faith in something bigger than themselves. Like um, what's your happy hustle hack when it comes to connecting to a higher power, you know, maybe something you do um, in the spiritual realm that we could deem yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I could we could do a whole episode on this idea of yeah. faith because I, I, faith is critical to me, and it isn't. Um, I, I don't. I don't mean necessarily in religious context. Well, that's certainly true, uh, but to me, faith is doing what you believe to be true, often in spite of what you see, sense, or feel. All right. So mm. to me, faith is a verb. It, it, it's you're mm. doing something because. Uh, you know, it, and, until you, until your faith gets tested, you don't really know what you believe, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, true. you know, and, and that's what a lot of people out there are saying, well, I believe this or that about God. And then life gets tough. And then you, then you find out what they really believe, right. By, by what that happens there. So, um, you know, I think some of my hacks around that, uh, again, my personal faith in God, uh, as a Christian, I'm, I'm that's, that's front and center. Like we are mm -hmm. a Christian company and we talk about that as a company. That doesn't mean you have to be a Christian to work with us or you have to be a Christian to mm -hmm. work on our team. Um, but like, I like, I like to say, you don't have to share the details of my faith to enjoy the benefits of my beliefs. Like mm. because of my beliefs, I'm going to treat people with kindness. I'm going to treat people with love and compassion and care and integrity and all those kind of things. Yeah. And that's kind of how we, how we roll. And so, um, you know, we, we're, we're very upfront about that. That's who we are as a company. Um, you know, and that, and, and that guides our core values and how we interact with everybody so that we, we can actually, we think 
you know, bless people who interact with us. And, yeah. and that's kind of where that comes from. So I think it's about not running from whatever your faith is, not running it from it and just being true to it, you know, and, and actually living it out in a real way. The world's full of hypocrites and fake people who say one thing, but don't actually do what they say. And we don't want to be that. We want to be authentic in that way. Mm, I love that. Um, I mean, you don't have to share my beliefs to get the benefits. Is that what you said? Yeah, you don't, have, you don't have to share the details of my faith to enjoy the benefits of my beliefs. Oh, that's yeah. good, man. That's real good. I love that. Bill, I want to respect your time. I'm going to put you through the rapid fire round real quick, right. and then we'll wrap right. this up. All right. This is just, you know, random questions. And right. I ask you, and you answer honestly, first thing that comes to mind. Are you ready? All right, ready. Favorite movie? Go. Oh, uh, I'm just going to go with uh, Tenet. Favorite book? Ooh. Oh, that is not an easy question, Gary. <laughs> There's so know, many I books. Know. Come on, man. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with one that's really impacted me, First Things First by Stephen Covey. Mm. Favorite food? Wow. Uh, I'm going to say ice cream. What's your spirit animal? I have no idea. What came to mind? <laughs> what came to mind? Uh, you know, unfortunately, when, it, when you said that, uh, a lizard came to mind. I'm not even sure why. I'm like, what? <laughs> nice. Lizard it know. is. Best business advice. Best business advice. Um, be authentic. Mm. Three things you're most grateful for. My wife, my kids, and uh, friends like you. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. And if you had a billboard for the world to see with your last piece of content on there, what does that billboard read? Live a story worth telling. Ooh, crush that rapid fire round, mm -hmm. Bill. And brother, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you. Thank you so much for sharing your love, your light, your wisdom, mm -hmm. for being so impactful on my journey. Truly, like, mm -hmm. I mean... I can say you truly changed the trajectory of my life with this book. And it is definitely something I'm so grateful that Rory, you know, connected us and, and that I went in with story builders because it, it has been uh, a powerful journey and shout out to Jen and Akimi and Christy and the whole team. Like they, it really is uh, an all-star cast. And I just want to say thank you for everything, man. Well, you're, you're very welcome, Carrie. It's our pleasure. Yeah. And go ahead and just mention where the best place is for everyone to follow you online. And again, where they can go to, to snag one of those calls. Yeah. Yeah. Grab a story strategy session right now. Mystorybuilders.com forward slash story. Hmm. Mystorybuilders.com forward slash story. Book a call. Totally free. No obligation. We're just here to help you. Uh, and then if you want to connect with me personally, best place is probably LinkedIn. Right. So just uh, put Bill blank Shane. Um, Two simple syllables, lots of letters in between, right? Uh, B-L-A-N-K-S-C-H-A-E-N. Look me up on LinkedIn. Shoot me a message. Let's connect. Happy to do that. Awesome. Yeah. We'll link that up in the show notes as well and your LinkedIn. But, man, this has been awesome. Bill, final question. What does happy hustling mean to you? Go all out with a smile on your face and enjoy every minute of it. Ooh, love it. Mic drop. Thank you all for watching and, and listening. This has been awesome. I appreciate you, Bill Blankshane. We are out. Peace and love, everyone.